what's going on socialites ryan the commish here with a little pre-draft primer for everybody trying to get everybody set up for the majors draft later tonight and the minor league draft happening next week so i hope that these quick tips really help you out when it comes to your draft selections so we're going to be going over team cores so you know what kind of Pokemon to pick when it comes to type coverage. We're going to look at hazards, how to set them up and how to remove them. Very important singles. And we're going to talk about defensive Pokemon. Um, we all know what Pokemon are strong and can hit hard. If you play the games, that's how the game kind of makes you play through in the story mode. Like you just try to one-shot things, type coverage, etc. In competitive singles, it's a lot different there's a lot more positioning and uh switching in and out so you need those defensive cores that can take a few hits heal back up kind of keep you in that momentum swing there so we're gonna start off here by going over the three type cores i'm gonna link this um article in the description so definitely check it out but this is from smogon you know, the foremost site for singles battles since Pokemon, uh, their competitive form as doubles. So the first core that we're looking at is the classic Water Fire Grass. Very popular. That's what you get for the starters. Um, they all hit each other for super effective, but they all cover each other's weaknesses as well. Water and Grass cover the rock and ground weakness of fire. Um, the electric and grass weakness of water, grass can take those hits, uh, fire can take the grass hits, and grass um, is just a horrible typing, so the other two are just better because of that. But uh, yeah, so typically you want to make sure that you have a water, a fire, and a grass Pokemon on your team to fill out those weaknesses. Um, that's an easy one for people to get. Next is kind of the next level up is the Steel Fairy Dragon Core. So again, this is kind of like Steel Beach Dragon or Steel Beats Fairy, Fairy Beats Dragon. Steel resists both of them. And Dragon really doesn't have like too many resistances or uh, weaknesses other than the Steel and Fairy types. So... You definitely want to make sure you have a good Steel and Fairy on your team. I don't think Dragon is too important, but again, if you can break through your opponent's Steel and Fairy core, then your Dragon Pokemon can just kind of go nuts. So those are another kind of pairing to think about there as well. Again, you, you can take your time, kind of look at this a little bit more. And the last one, which is more of like a niche core, um, people bring it up, but it's the Fighting Dark Psychic, so Fighting Beats Dark, Dark Beats Psychic, Psychic Beats Fighting. Um, again, this isn't too important as compared to the other two, I would say. Um, but Fighting is a very good type offensively, and Dark is a very good type defensively. And Psychic is kind of like the middle, like it doesn't resist much, but not much resists it. Other than like the Steel and uh, Dark types, of course. So, again, it's kind of like that middle ground there. So, I, I would more focus on the Steel Fairy Dragon and the Fire Water Grass cores. Like, you want to kind of make sure they check off these boxes. And then, look, look at this, you know, re read the article. See what, what you think about all that. So, that goes over the uh, type cores and what they kind of, kind of do for for each other. Um, this article is a little dated too, so it makes references to like, I just saw like Pursuit in here and stuff. Uh, Pursuit's not in the game anymore. But yeah, so next we're gonna talk about defensive cores. So I made a little tier list here for you to see. So the way it works is we got physical walls, special walls, physical pivots, and we're going to talk about each of these individually. Clerics and bulk utilities. So the wall is when this thing's in front of you, so physical walls, if you're a physical attacker and this thing gets in front of you, 
and it's at full health or relatively full health, you're not going to break through it. So you need to find another way to beat it. Same thing with special. If it gets in front of a special attacker, it's going to be very hard for them to get through it. Pivots are a little different. You can wear down pivots. Their job is to go in and out of battle. And they have different abilities or a utility that allows them to do that. So they can come in, take like a one hit reasonably well, but then they kind of have to get out of there after that, you know. They they can't just kind of sit there and keep healing stuff off. Some of them can, um, and we'll kind of talk about those um, as well, but I put them mostly under the pivot side. The clerics are more team support. Uh, they don't have as much longevity in switching in and out or staying in the battle, but they can help your team. They do have, all of these do have some utility, um, and we'll talk about it, that it does allow them to heal up, but they're more team players than they are just kind of going in and out or staying in front of a body. And then bulk utility, th these are just good defensive Pokemon who are, a lot of them are going to be able to hit hard or do extra things for you. Um, so we'll kind of go over them real quick as well. But let's just look at each of these. So physical walls, again, these are, if you can get this in front of a physical attacker at full health or near full health, they're not going to be able to break through you. So you see Quagsire, you're thinking like Quagsire, how is Quagsire wall? Quagsire has the ability unaware, which means that opponent's um, stat boosts don't affect it. So you could have a plus six, you know, Pokemon, and it's going to be hitting for neutral damage. Like, Quagsire is going to act like it's a base zero, you know, stat boost attack. Um, and Quagsire gets stuff like recover, gets toxic, so you can toxic the opponent. That residual damage is going to wear it down. You can keep recovering as long as they're not doing more than 50% or at least not much more. You're going to keep healing all that back. Um, in certain matchups too, you could run Water Absorb and Haze, um, but Quagsire, you typically runs unaware. Next you got the Skarmory. So Skarmory is another physical wall, very nice 140 base defense. Um, again, this is a Pokemon that can get in, it only has two weaknesses, it's only weak to fire and electric. So if you can get in front of a physical attacker that doesn't have any of that sort of coverage, uh, you can roost off attacks, you can set up stealth rocks, you can whirlwind um, things around if you need to, um, if they're trying to set up on you. So yeah, that's another good one. Uh, Galarian Corsola with Eviolite, very bulky, especially on the physical side. It gets stuff like Strength Sap, which reduces the attack stat and heals Corsola. It can do Will-O-Wisp. Just has a lot of utility to take care of physical attackers as well. Next, we have Hapowdon. Hapowdon, able to set up the sand, which will chip away at your opponent and also help um, with its teammates, but it can get slack off which allows it to heal as well. Very nice physical defense. You could put a Rocky Helmet or Leftovers on it to give it more chip damage against physical attackers or give it more healing. Uh, again, it can learn stuff like Roar and Whirlwind to phase uh, set up attackers in and out doing damage if it's set up Stealth Rocks or if another teammate set up Spikes. Ferrothorn. Uh, Ferrothorn doesn't have like giant recovery, but if you put leftovers on it and you get Leech Seed off, it can definitely be recovering. Uh, you can do stuff like Iron Defense um, and Curse to make you even more of a physical wall. Um, just watch out for like Fire types, of course, and Strong Fighting types can still do quite a bit to it. But uh, with its Iron Barbs, you could also put a Rocky Helmet on, and every time it gets hit with a physical attack it's going to be doing chip damage so physical attackers aren't going to want to stay in too long against a ferrothorn avalug has a very high uh, base defense as well and it also gets recover it also gets rapid spin so this is one of those pokemon you can throw heavy duty boots on bring it in you can spin away some hazards and then if your opponent is stuck with a 
physical attacker that might not have like a super effective move against it you can recover off damage uh, you know you can hit it with powerful body presses or uh, avalanches as well Toxapex one of the best physical walls in the game uh, it has the ability regenerator so if someone brings in a special attacker or a Pokemon that's super effective against you you can swap it out get back some recovery it can set up toxic spikes it can set up toxic um, just a lot of ways it can poison opponents um, with physical attackers you could also run baneful bunker which when they try to hit you it won't do damage and they will get poisoned um, and you use that with recover and haze to make sure that uh, Toxapex stays around. Again, just a great physical wall. And then Pukamuku is kind of in the same vein as Quagsire. Uh, it also gets unaware. Uh, it gets toxic. Uh, it gets counter as well. So against physical attackers, it can do a lot of damage back to them. And yeah, just a, another good Pokemon. So the, these are what I consider like some of the better physical walls that we have available. I didn't really count many of the legendaries, but um, some of them are also pretty good. So again, these are Pokemon that you put them in front and they can heal off the damage. They can give passive damage and everything and that that's how they'll win. You're not going to break through them. Next, we got the special walls. Chansey and Blissey, pretty classic special walls. Super high HP, super high special defense. Uh, stuff like Seismic Toss, um, they'll, they'll be able to wear through the opponents as well without taking too much damage. Um, soft boil able to heal them up. Then we got Milotic. Milotic, another Pokemon, gets a very nice special defense. You can run Marvel Scale so it gets even more of a boost when it's burned. Uh, and with leftovers, you'll negate that burn damage and recover will let you heal back. Um, and Again, just Milotix, one of those Pokemon you can get Scald. So if they bring in a physical attacker, you have the potential to burn it. Uh, hypnosis for sleep as well. Jellicent, um, just another Pokemon gets Strength Sap, gets Recover. Again, these are Pokemon they got super high HP and defenses, and they can recover stuff off. Same thing with Cryogonal. Very nice HP and special defense. Basically, the special version of Avala gets Recover, gets Rapid Spin. Okay, so the difference between the walls and the pivots, as we spoke about, was pivots generally can't sit in front and kind of take all the same. Uh, the slow bros are kind of like, in the right matchup, you could have slow bros sit in. They do get slack off, and they, they can recover um, a lot of damage as well. Uh, you could also say the same thing about like Mandibuzz and Corviknight being able to roost, but... With the slow bros and slow kings, they get the regenerate ability, so swapping them out heals them by 30%. So that is great for them to come in and out of battle, of course. Um, same thing with the Weezings. Uh, just very good on the defensive side. Not too many weaknesses if you're putting Levitate on them. So they can come in on the physical attack or not take a lot of damage. They can give off Will-O-Wisp. They can defog away hazards. They can set up Toxic as well on a switch in. Moltres got a big boost this generation with the heavy duty boots. Um, so against physical attack you can come in and you have a 30% chance of burning them with the flame body ability. So a burned physical attacker is basically dead in the water. Um, it can't do too much at that point. Uh, and then you, and with U-turn, you can get right out of that really quick as well. If let's say like you think they might have a rock type move, uh, if you outspeed with Moltres, you can U-turn out. Kind of the same idea uh, with Swamper. It got flip turn this generation, so it can come in. Uh, if you run like a bold nature, it can come in, take a hit, flip turn out. You know, threaten something and flip turn out into something else. Set up stealth rocks, etc. Another regenerator Pokemon, we have Tangrowth. Again, a very nice HP and defense stat. It gets knockoff, um, gets like Giga Drain and everything. So it can come in, it can 
do a knockoff onto whatever Pokemon is coming in on it, and then it can swap out and with their generator. You'll be back at full health. Uh, as far as Uxie goes, um, it does get U-turn. It doesn't have too many healing opportunities, but again, it can come in, take a hit, U-turn out. Again, these are Pokemon you want to come in on something kind of threaten it by because they know they they won't be able to do damage to you so they have to swap out and then you swap out kind of like with it with that u-turn another regenerated pokemon amoongus um spore so you can put to sleep whatever tries to swap into it and then pivot it out to get that health back mandibuzz is one of my favorite pivot pokemon great typing dark flying it gets defog it gets roost it gets foul play it gets u-turn so again this is one of those pokemon you can come in on rocks you know you could run boots if you want to but i would probably just run the leftovers come in on rocks against a physical attacker tries to do something you you can just Defog, roost it off, you turn out, like you have a lot of options with Mandibuzz of how you how you want to do that. I put Landorus and Incineroar in here uh, for physical pivots, mainly due to their intimidate ability, um, allowing them to take those physical hits even more. Uh, they have solid bulk. It's not like great compared to some of the other ones on, on this list, but with the intimidate, it definitely makes up for it. And Again, they both have U-turn, parting shot. So again, they can come in. And then with Landris, you can use your speed to U-turn out of there. For Incineroar, you can you can use your bulk more with Incineroar. But come in, get that Intimidate, then U-turn out. Or parting shot on something that's coming in so that whatever you bring in next um, isn't as threatened by it. So... Unfortunately, Buzzwool doesn't get U-Turn, even though it's a bug type, but bug fighting is a very good defensive typing, um, as long as you're not going up against flying attacks. But he just has massive HP and massive defenses, um, and if you can't hit this for flying damage, you're going to be in big trouble against a Buzzwool that comes in on you. Um, it no longer gets Roost in this generation, if I'm not mistaken, but if it did, it would just be even more scary. And then we got Corviknight, the Gen 8 kind of mascot when it comes to uh, this position of defensive Pokemon. Um, it's basically like Mandibuzz as well. You can get U-Turn, you can get Defog and Roost. Um, your attack of choice would probably be Body Press, but you, you can definitely do do a lot with Corvine as well. All right, next we go to the special pivots. Um, we have a lot less of these than the physical pivots. Um, Snorlax can come in, take a special attack, um, but you can't kind of leave him too much, especially because we banned rest. Um, he can get some recovery with a berry or leftovers, however, and he will definitely threaten out. Um, you know, any special attacker. Uh, same thing with Moltres. Um, it can come in, uh, can get maybe a Berserker proc if it comes in enough. The Slow King's kind of in the same vein as the Slow Bros. They can come in, use their regenerate abilities to come in and out, um, use their slack off to get some healing as well. Very powerful. Gudra has a super high special defense. It can come in and with its dragon type it has a lot of good resistances it can come in take a hit and then threaten something out like you're gonna have to probably swap into a steel or fairy type and then you get hit with a fire blast and you know that could all be over i think it also gets sludge wave to hit fairy type so it's prediction dependent after you swap it in depending on what your team has or your opponent's team has but it, it'll be able to tank those hits very nicely especially if you put an assault vest on it oof it's never going down. Speaking of Assault Vest, Assault Vest, uh, Tornadus Tyrion. Um, this is another Regenerator Pokemon. And with Assault Vest, you get a lot of special bulk. And again, you get U-Turn, you get Hurricane. You know, you, 
you get focus blast you can kind of just like pivot around until you find that opening to kind of go crazy and uh tornadoes Tyrion is definitely one of the faster pivots that we have here i'm kind of looking i don't see anything that's faster than him on this list barring a choice scarf so he's definitely gonna do a lot all right next we got the clerics these are more team players so your wish passers so a lot of these are going to have like wish healing wish protect um probably something like a foul play on umbreon uh maybe air slash on toga kiss you know hyper voice but you know you're gonna wish swap out into something that has some damage that'll be able to take an attack maybe it's going to heal back up or you're going to wish and protect to heal yourself up you know that's kind of what the clerics do keep yourself and your whole team healthy uh regenerator as well on audino not the best pokemon around but again it can wish pass um and when it swaps out it does get some recovery so you're kind of getting a two for one with audino which is why it's on this list all right finally we got the bulky utility so these are just general bulky pokemon that that can do some things so you got tentacruel which can set up toxic spikes it can set up a rapid spin to remove your opponent's hazards around you um again it's a very good it can take some physical hits for sure with its uh water poison typing very strong shuckle um very high defense is very low hp so i mean it's not gonna take too many especially on the super effective side but bug rock isn't the worst typing and you can get your hazards up your stealth rocks your sticky web um before it goes down so you you can pivot pivot it kind of in and out if you need to tarantar again as long as it's not getting hit with like a fighting attack um it's going to be able to survive a lot especially when it sets up the sand um it's going to get that special defense boost as well so that's another one of those pokemon that you can do some stuff with again it doesn't have any recovery which is why it's not necessarily as good as all of these but it will tank some hits and you'll be able to dish some damage back threaten out some pokemon and give you back the momentum torkoal i was really close to putting it somewhere up here just because it does have a lot of utility but again it doesn't really have any recovery um you get stealth rocks you get rapid spin um if you think your opponent's going to switch out you can yawn to uh make it go to sleep the next turn if it wants to stay in again so you know on the physical side it's great and with the sun up it'll even be able to survive like a physical water attack uh special attacks not so much right period is great with solid rock even its attacks that are super effective against it as long as you're not getting hit like four times with like a special water or grass you're going to be able to tank those hits um again it gets stealth rock so again it can come in it can take a couple hits um, as long as they're not four times effective especially on the special side right here is more of a physical um, defender the rotoms here heat and wash um, they're probably somewhere up with like the pivots but they don't want to take too many hits you kind of want to just kind of bring them in and out like volt switch around um, but they have very good typing uh, especially with their levitate ability canceling out their electric weakness so rotoms only weak to rock and water and the wash rotom's only weak to grass so like there's just not a lot that's going to take too much damage onto it if you uh ev it right you know give it like some special defense uh rotom heat you might have to put boots on but you can probably have like leftovers or something on the rotom wash or specs or scarf as well are pretty good all right next we got heat ran um, again as long as you're not getting hit by like a ground attack um, he's gonna do very good for you on the uh, defensive side as well um, again doesn't have any recoveries so but the steel fire type is very strong como again so a lot of these just kind of lack the recovery so como again good good defenses uh good typing as well the dragon typing gives it a lot of resistances so you can come in take a hit or two threaten something out for tapu fini 
Um, this is more of like you can get a haze off against some attackers. Um, it's just a very bulky Pokemon. Uh, you don't even have to put much into it as far as like attack stat because you can just run Nature's Madness to cut your opponent's HP in half. And that should put in range of uh, some of your other Pokemon that are more, you know, offensively invested. Celesteela does get a little bit of healing. Um, I think it lost Roost this generation, but it does still get Leech Seed. So you could run Leech Seed with Leftovers and get some good recovery there. Uh, Steel Flying is a pretty decent type, only weak to Fire and Electric. Stack Attacka, one of the highest defenses in the game. Probably the highest. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Um, ground Attacks will hurt it, though. Even Physical Ground Attacks will take a very good chunk out of it. Um, but again, you can bring it in on most physical attackers and tank a bunch of hits as long as it's not hitting you for like like i said ground type damage and then last here i put uh reggie drago uh the new reggie um very high 200 hp it doesn't have the best defenses but with the dragon typing like it has so many resistances and you're only getting hit by ice dragon and fairy for super effective and you're not going to bring it in on those, right? You're not going to switch it in. Um, but I do think like a Scarf set wouldn't be bad. You know, you can bring it in on stuff that you resist. If your opponent has a Fairy type, you know, get back out of there and bring in like hard switch into like your Steel or Poison type. But um, with Scarf, it should outspeed most other dragons, so Dragon Energy or Dragon Pulse with its ability Dragon Small will do huge damage to dragon types and anything else other than Steel or Fairy types. So just make sure you take care of the Steel and Fairy types before you really try to go ham with uh, Reggie Drago. But yeah, so these are kind of just my quick look at kind of like the good defensive Pokemon that you that you can use on your team so i think every team should have one or two of these to be able to pivot around i mean it is type dependent of course like you you can switch things into like quad resisted attacks like if if you have like talon flame you can switch it into an attack that you know is going to be grass or bug um or ground and be able to uh tank that pretty well of course all right, so the last part I want to go over is setting up hazards and then how to remove them. You want to make sure you have Pokemon that can set up these hazards here. So we're going to go over each of these. So first off is Stealth Rocks. Stealth Rocks is a very unique hazard in that the damage it does is based on if the Pokemon is weak to the rock type. So typically it does 1 8th damage when a Pokemon comes in and is neutral. But if you're four times weak, such as like a Volcarona or Talonflame or Charizard, these Firebug, Fire Flying types, Moltres, you're going to lose half of your health, half of your entire health bar just from switching in. Heavy Duty Boots really helps that, but you can only get one Heavy Duty Boots in our league. So if you have multiple Fire or Flying types, or, you know, like one of each or something, you're going to have to really decide how you do that. And then say you have like a steel fighting type, you know, it'll only take one thirty second of the health. Like it's going to take less than nothing. So these are the Pokemon that can learn Stealth Rocks. You got Steelix, you got Gigalith, who's great, Crustle, Carbing, Diancy, all the Lycan Rocks can learn it. Nihiligo, Necrozma, Stack Attacka, Colossal, Stone Journer. Don't pick Stone Journer. But uh, you know, the the rest could probably be okay in, in certain matchups. Those are by level up. And Stealth Rocks is also a TR this generation. So a lot more Pokemon can learn it. You got the Sand Slashes. If you want like some fast stealth rocks on a weather team, you got the Needos, Needle Queen, Needle King, Clefable, of course, just make Clefable even better as a utility Pokemon, Wigglytuff, Doug Trio, Marowax can both learn it, 
uh, right on there for Rhyperior. Chansey can learn it, so that's great. You bring Chansey in on a special attacker. They're going to swap out. That'll give you the opportunity to set up your stealth rocks. Pinsir, interestingly enough, I wouldn't probably put on Pinsir. Amistar, Kabutops, Aerodactyl is pretty good as a fast stealth rocker. Pseudowoodo, Shuckle we spoke about. Corsola, another reason why Corsola is such a good uh, singles Pokemon. Skarmory, Miltank, Blissey, same thing as Glafable there. Tyranitar, of course. Celebi can learn it. Swampert, it's great with. Agron, Torkoal, Claydol, Cradilly. Like there's, there's so many. Metagross, of course. Regirock, Registeel. Groudon, who's available in our league this season. Garchomp, Hapowdon, Mamoswine, all the elf spirits. Heat Ran, of course. Excadrill's a fast stealth rocker. Stealth Rock, Rapid Spin, Earthquake, Iron Head. You know, you could put Swords Dance in there somewhere as well. Seismitoad, great stealth rocker. Crocodile, Ferrothorn. Like they're like you're you're gonna want to make sure you have one, maybe even two stealth rockers on your team. Like it's such a key um, hazard. You don't need the other hazards we're gonna go over. Just make sure you have stealth rocks. Golurk, Cobalion, Landorus Tyrion. Went over those coma o. Yeah, so yeah, plenty of stealth rockers to go through. Yeah, so make sure, you know, look at this list. I'll link this down below as well, but look at this list. Make sure you have some of these Pokemon on your draft board for when you want to pick. Because you're, you're, you're definitely going to need at least one on your team. All right, next we're going to go over spikes. So spikes is interesting. Stealth rocks, you only got to click it once. As long as your opponent doesn't remove it, which we'll go over in a little bit, you only got to click it once. Spikes is different. Spikes you can click up to three times. So you can have three layers of spikes, and they do different damage depending. So one layer, you do one-eighth. That's the same as a base stealth rock. So getting this up is basically... The same as a stealth rock. Two of them, you're doing one six damage, and then three of them, you're doing a full quarter damage. Now, spikes, Pokemon that are flying or have levitate are immune to it, but it's still a good hazard. So, Pokemon like Cloyster, I probably wouldn't use Cloyster, but Quillfish and Skarmory are both good spikers, and spikes is also a TR this generation. So, we do have several Pokemon who can learn the Sand Slashes. You can run stuff like dual um hazards if if you're going up against a team and they don't and you see like oh they don't have like a rapid spinner or a defogger that they're going to be able to abuse throw a focus sash on this sand slash you know and have it set up stealth rocks and a layer of spikes before it dies almond star a lot of these pokemon learn both of them heracross can learn it deli bird uh Juan, if you want to use the number one pick on Delibird, be my guest. Glalie, Roserade, Frostlass as a fast spiker. Scolipede, Garbodor, Ferrothorn, again, can learn Stealth Rocks and Spikes. Aselgore, a very fast spiker. Diggersby, Klefki with Prankster for Prankster Spikes. So you can probably get two... Or maybe even three layers up with Klefki pretty easily, um, depending on the matchup. Galissapod, Nugginadel, Pincurchin, all good options. So again, Stealth Rocks, you want to make sure you have at least one, maybe two Pokemon that can learn it. But Spikes has its own utility in that it's more guaranteed damage in a way in that one layer is always one eighth you don't have to worry about Pokemon resisting but it is dodged by flying type Pokemon 
but you can guarantee more damage too by kind of stacking them. All right, the last hazard we're going to talk about is toxic spikes. So this one's like spikes in that you can get up to two layers. The first layer gives normal poisoning, and the second layer gives toxic poisoning. So the difference between that is toxic poisoning ramps up, but it actually starts slower. So typically you only need one layer of spikes for toxic spikes to do the job, but if you think the game's going to go really long, you could try to get the, the second layer up as well. Same thing with spikes. Pokemon that have levitate or flying are immune to it. And if your opponent switches a poison Pokemon onto the toxic spikes, they will be absorbed. So you got to be sure of that too. Usually I try and knock out my opponent's opposing poison Pokemon before I try and get toxic spikes up. So Pokemon that learn Toxic Spikes, you got the Nidos, Queen and King, Cloyster can learn Toxic Spikes, Quillfish, of course, Roserade, Drapion, Garbodor, Toxapex, who we talked about, and Hilligo. And then learning by the TR, Neo, the Nidos, of course, Tentacruel. Uh, Tentacruel doesn't get Toxic this generation, so you do want Toxic Spikes on your Tentacruel. Weezings. Both get Toxic Spikes, very good. Amistar can get it. Amistar gets all three of these Spikes, Rocks, and Toxic Spikes. Not that I would recommend doing that. Vespaquin. Scolipede, so you got double Spikes with Scolipede. Kafgrigus, uh, and Runerigus with that. Acelgore, so you could get Spikes and Toxic Spikes up with a Focus Sash Acelgore pretty easily. Dragalge. Naganadel gets Toxic Spikes, Binkurchin gets Toxic Spikes, so again, uh, I'll link all these down in the description, so it's pretty good to definitely have a Pokemon that can either learn Toxic or Toxic Spikes, and Toxic Spikes can definitely um, do, do a lot for you if you can get two of them up against some of the bulkier teams. Alright, so now your opponent, you've learned how to get up hazards. Your opponent now, because they're part of the league, they watch this video too, I hope, they know how to get up hazards now. So how do you get rid of the hazards? Well, one of the best ways is rapid spin. Rapid spin is a normal type move, physical attack, got its power boost this generation to 50 base power, and it gives you a plus one speed increase. But the best thing is it removes all the hazards on your side of the field. So if your opponent gave you stealth rocks and a spike, you rapid spin, those are gone. And it doesn't affect the hazard you set up on your opponent's side. So here you're looking at Blastoise, the Sand Slashes, Starmie's a good spinner, Hitmontop's a good spinner, Torkoal is a good spinner, Claydol. Excadrill is a great spinner. It really appreciates the speed boost. Cryogonal, Avalug, Serena, Delmise, Faramosa, Eldegoss, Colossal, Mr. Rhyme, Regieleki. Of course, we'll have Rapid Spin on its set. Tentacruel, Hitmonlee, and Hitmonchan. Kabuto in there by Kabutops is not on here, but Delibird, Anorith, and Therefore, Armaldo, Turtonator, and more Pico. So again, you want probably one Pokemon that can learn either Rapid Spin or the next move we're going to go over. So look at this list. Think like, okay, Blastoise, pretty solid Pokemon. Torkoal, if you're on Sun Team, you already got that kind of built in. Excadrill. On sand teams or even extra drills, just good all around. Like you just run mold breaker and you're all set. The second move, which is a little bit different, is defog. So the pros and cons of defog compared to rapid spin. Cons: it doesn't damage your opponent, and it removes not only the hazards on your side of the field but on your opponent's side as well. So sometimes you have to make the call who needs the hazards more myself or my opponent when you do that and as far as his pros go since it's not a normal type attack one of the best ways to counteract rapid spin is to swap in a ghost type 
which will block the attack because it won't be affected by it. So defog is affected by that. Uh, one more con too. One of the best counters to defog is to swap in a defiant Pokemon because defog not only removes the hazards, but it also decreases your opponent's evasion by one stage. So swapping in like a Bisharp or a Thunderous, um, yeah, gonna be a bad time. So these are the Pokemon that can learn Defog. You got Galarian Weezing, Giratina Altered Form, Braviary, Mandibuzz, Tapu Fini, Kartana, Surfetched, and Frostmoth. Pokemon like Noctowl, Zubat, therefore Crobat can learn it. Scizor, Shiftry, Swablu, therefore Altaria. Driftblim, Unpheasant, Conkelder, interestingly enough, I guess he flexes his muscles or something. Arkin, so therefore Archaeops. Emolga, Talonflame, Halucha, Noivern, Decidueye, Lorantis. Corviknight and Cramorant. So there's not as much distribution as in previous generations. You like Pokemon like Landorus and a lot of flying Pokemon you used to get defog. Now it, not so much. It's not a uh, tutor move. So again, you're you're gonna want to look at these and think like, okay, I need a defog or I need a rapid spinner. There's not too many of them. These are high priority um, sort of picks. Because if you can't remove your opponent's hazards or prevent them, you're going to not be in good position. Now, an another way to prevent them is to be proactive. You can do stuff like Taunt. Cinderace gets a unique ability, Court Change. So you can take your opponent's hazards and flip them around. So there are different ways to do that. But I'm going to link all this down below. Again, we talked about the different typings, type cores, three type cores. We talked about walls and pivots, and we talked about stealth rocks, spikes, toxic spikes, and how to remove them with rapid spin and defog. Thanks for joining me, guys, and let's have an awesome draft tonight.